everyone, Katie Sutton here from Zen Within Academy speaking to you about the November 2019 energy. Um, wow. <laughs> there is a lot happening astrologically, energetically, and in the collective consciousness right now. And one of the things that's been coming forward so strongly as we've entered both Scorpio season, Mercury retrograde, and preparations for the 1111 energy portal is that we are purging grief. We are purging grief for um, those that we've lost, for parts of our lives that have come to a close, for patterns that we've been carrying that have kept us limited. We are purging grief for um, the collective consciousness as well. I just got off of 10 days working um, at an alternate location at the beach and um, got to connect with, with a lot of different women who were moving through deep, deep grief. And one of the things that I would notice is that this grief was living in the outside of their field, almost like a shadow in their field. And it was, um, it was like this gray, hazy energy that existed in the outside of their field. And so the way that they interacted with the world around them came from that hazy gray place. Their perspective was different, right, than reality. Um, they weren't able to access their joy. And as I have unearthed my own grief over the last couple of weeks, because every time I work with someone, there's some sort of energetic match or something for me to learn as well. And that's the beautiful part of what I get to do as an energy medicine teacher and healer is to support people in their growth, but also I get to grow as a part of that as well. And as I've been finding grief in my field, it has this sticky substance quality to it where it lives in our energy field and it's almost like this magnet for other negative emotions to um, attach onto. And um, I had no idea how much grief I was carrying um, as I've started to do more and more work um, with the Divine Feminine and with women and men in holding that divine feminine frequency as I'm letting go of more and more um, masculine constructs of effort, I find that I'm grieving um, how I used to be and how I've been uh, up until now. Um, so the last 35 years, I, I've been grieving lost innocence where uh, there was a lot of effort that I put into just being and trying to be the best little girl, the best college student, the best corporate employee, and all that pressure that I put on myself has limited my ability to shine my light so much that it has, um, you know, there's, there's grief there because I feel like I've missed out on something and like I'm trying to make up for lost time. And so however this grief is showing up for you, understand that as we're in Scorpio season right now, that means that the deepest, darkest shadow parts of ourselves are being called to the surface to be examined. And the shadow part of ourselves is not always our favorite part to look at, right? It's kind of messy. But understand that we're not here to judge the shadow. We're not here to deny the shadow. We're not here to... Um, spiritually bypass it. We are here to lovingly accept every part of ourselves and radically love ourselves. I, I hosted an online healing circle last night that you can still get access to if you're called, but it was around radical self-love. And I talked about how we need to just own the heck out of our shadow selves. I actually had everybody put in chat, what are their shadow self elements, right? And mine are control and perfection and overgiving, right? I am a healer and I'm an empath and I have overgiven for so long. And that's why I do the work that I do now to help other people learn how to set those boundaries and heal those traumas so that they don't live in that pattern. But it's, it's just a pattern, right? And it's a part of my shadow self. And I know that when I'm stressed and not taking care of myself, it gets out of balance. But when I am taking good care of myself and using my tools and doing my practices and meditating and getting out in nature and playing, play is a really important part of this, then I am in balance and those shadow elements become my greatest gift. Meaning my ability to control means that I can hold really good space for people when they're moving through difficult things. My 
desire to give is a beautiful thing because I can be of service. My perfection energy is even a beautiful thing because I can manage a whole bunch of balls in the air at once and make sure everything is happening the way it needs to, right? So when I'm in balance, my shadow self is a gift. And because we're in Mercury retrograde and everything is slowing down, right? Projects are not moving forward. Um, plans are shifting. We're being called to rest. Some of us have gotten sick because we're not good at taking rest. And so the only way we take rest is if we get ill, right? Um, Mercury retrograde allows us that time to slow down. And so many of us beat ourselves up when we take time to slow down. We feel like, well, I should be doing X, Y, and Z. The house is a mess, right? The bills need to be paid. The things need to be done. And yes, that is absolutely true. And we have to be practical and do the human things that are necessary. But we also get to take rest and we also get to slow down. And it's in that slowing down that we are allowed to take a deeper look at the darkest parts of ourselves, a deeper look at the shadow self, and really connect in and say, well, what are the patterns that are running as the undercurrent of energy that I'm not tuning into, right? What is happening underneath the surface that because I've been so busy, I haven't been paying attention to? And as I started to connect into that over these last couple of weeks, I found a lot of trauma right? There was some trauma, some fight or flight mode that I was in constantly, and I was running from it by being busy. And so it's important that we use these times where we're being forced to go slower and things are falling off of our calendars left and right, and we suddenly have this free time that we beat ourselves up about not filling, right? It's important that we take that time to slow down and rest and tune in and go into meditation and find that space of connection. And so if you have time right now, take a deep breath and close your eyes. And just become aware of your body. And I want you to tune into the subtle flow of energy, the undercurrent of energy just beneath the surface. And for some of you, you might feel that there's a part of your body that's contracted, that's holding on tight, that's preparing for something. Others of you might experience kind of a pulse of energy in a particular part of the body. And see what that energy is trying to tell you. Ask it to give you an image, a color, a felt sense, an emotion, just ask for some information. And if there's nothing that you receive, just being present in this moment and connecting in is building circuitry that's going to allow you the next time you stop and take a breath to actually receive the information. So some of us get frustrated that when we stop and meditate and we ask for answers and we try to connect to our guides, nothing happens. Well, if you've been busy all day and the mind needs 30 minutes to calm down and relax, you're not going to receive just yet, right? Oftentimes when my guides are trying to get through to me, they will have to put me down. I will have to go to sleep because I like to be busy. I like to be serving others. I like to be doing things. But sometimes they have to come in, in and make me so tired that I have to lay down and take a nap, right? And that's how I have to connect in. And so understand that that might be part of your process, right? That might be something that happens for you as well. And that's okay. So as you tune in and you breathe and you connect... Just allow the breath to serve you and giving you the space to slow down. And as you breathe and as you tune in, just notice if there's something that comes up, right? You've been breathing here for a few moments with your eyes closed. And whatever information comes forward is exactly what you need in this moment. Because that's the energy that's running underneath. That's what you've been ignoring. That is the part of the shadow self that's not been paid attention to. And you might be like me. You might wake up and be like, wow, there's a pattern that I have been ignoring that needs to go, right? It's not serving me. 
And that awareness might come in tomorrow morning, and that's good too, right? It's all good. So just wrap up that breath. Coming back. And just come into a space of gratitude and joy in your heart. Gratitude and joy that you are in body, that you are here in this moment. And see if you can connect to that joy frequency that represents 12th dimensional consciousness, unity consciousness. And as you connect into that joy and that gratitude, your frequency shifts, your heart expands. And just for that moment, you're connected in And as you shift your frequency in this way, the world around you begins to shift. Things that are not in alignment with that frequency begin to fall away. This is how you start to shape your reality. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of November. The energy portal on 1111. Um, I haven't gotten a lot of insight yet on exactly what's coming in, but it feels like a soft wave of light. It um, feels like a nurturing motherly presence. So I hope you all will be excited for that. It comes right after a full moon. So be prepared for that nurturing mother energy to come in. You might even feel like you need to cocoon in order to receive that energy. You might need to go inward and take some time to yourself to receive that energy next Monday. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you next month. I'll put links to um, my online healing circle if you're interested in exploring radical self-love and the shadow self. Um, that's still up for registration. You can get the recordings and the live activation that we did. Um, and I hope you will tune in next month for our energy update in December. Have a wonderful day.